Hello, Ole Miss teachers and staff. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the gradual release of responsibility model. My name is Laura Smart. I'm the district TOA for English language arts. Taking a look at MTSS, our priority is always going to be delivering students with best first instruction in tier one, the core instruction. So today we're going to really be talking about how can we use the gradual release model in order to provide students with best first instruction. Here are the, here's the gradual release model. Um, you'll see the two triangles and gradual release all has to do with delivering instruction and the levels of responsibility of the student and the teacher of the content that's being delivered. Teachers use the gradual release model for tier one instruction in order to create a cycle of learning. All four of these components must be present in every lesson in order for learning to occur. Teaching occurs during focused instruction. Students synthesize the learning in the middle um, during guided and collaborative learning and then they apply and strengthen their learning during independent time. The process is fluid. You can often jump back and forth based on formative assessment, which is happening throughout. So the process is not linear. You may be providing students with guided instruction and then recognize that students are um, in need of another model and you have to go back to focus instruction and provide an additional model. You might send students off to do some collaborative learning and then notice as you're walking around that some students could benefit from more, from more guided instruction. So you may pull those students uh, to work in a small group with you while other students are working collaboratively with peers. So again, it, it's not linear and you're going to use formative assessment in order to really identify the needs of the students and the type of support that you need to offer at all points in your lesson. Gradual release has to do with the levels of teacher support and student accountability. We're gonna look a little further at that in just a moment. We're gonna look at a graduate, how gradual release might look during an ELA lesson in order to talk about the major components of the four different um, levels of support. So let's take a look at this example. You'll see that the objective uh, for the teacher's edition is that students are going to be working on understanding words by relating them to their opposites. This is a fourth grade standard, a language standard, that students are working on. So students are going to be using the synonyms and antonyms and also clues that the author provides in order to help them identify the meaning of unknown words um, or context clues. So during focused instruction, and remember you don't always have to start with focused instruction, um, it will depend on the content that you're delivering and the type of support that your students need. But just to give you a brief overview, I'm gonna start with um, start at the top with focused instruction. So there's two things that you're going to do during focused instruction in your daily lessons. The first thing you're going to do as the teacher is you're going to set the purpose and provide the students with a teacher model or think aloud. You'll notice um, when you set the purpose, you can introduce students to the learning target using I can statements and so that I can statements. So they understand what are they going to be learning and why it's going to be important for them to learn that. And then during the instruction, you'll want to offer students some think alouds where you share your metacognition and really give students an opportunity to see what's inside your thinking um, while, while you're, you're reading. So um, in this case, the teacher might say, in order to model this skill, when I read this, envision how many lives it will save. Picture all the amazing benefits. I was thinking that envision might have something to do with your eyes, 
because it says the word vision. And I was also thinking that it means to be able to see it because the author told me that you can picture all the amazing benefits. So you'll see in that Think Aloud, um, you provide the students with an opportunity to see the type of thinking that goes into the particular skill that you're modeling. And you wanna use I statements and um, also explain to students um, what you're thinking and why you're thinking that, because this is the type of language that we would want students to use when they start to take on this skill. The next step in instruction is going to be, in this lesson, is going to be guided instruction. Um, a big chunk of your time will be spent here. During guided instruction, the teacher will use um, questions, prompts, and cues in order to help students um, correct their errors or misconceptions. They won't tell the students the pieces of information they're missing, but instead they'll ask a question, prompt them, or cue them. During this time, although the teacher is providing guided instruction, students are the ones doing the cognitive work. The teacher is not standing up and calling on kids with hand raised hands raised, but instead the students are the ones that are expected to do the thinking, writing the responses on whiteboards, and the teacher is randomly calling on kids to share their thinking in order to assess how students are doing with this new concept or skill. Um, all the students are doing the work and the teacher is providing direct feedback and support continuously throughout. So it is still a high level of support, but students are now the ones that are trying out the new skill. So going back to our example of using context clues in order to figure out unknown words, you'll see in this example that during guided instruction, the teacher might be asking students um, as they're looking at different parts of the text to try to identify the meaning of some unknown words. In this example, in the anthology, you'll see the text says, the astronauts were bounding across the moon like ghosts on a trampoline. If the teacher were to ask students to identify what they thought bounding meant, let's pretend like a student responded and said, I think bounding means running. At that point, the teacher is not going to just say, no, bounding doesn't mean running and tell the student what it does mean. They're going to use questions, prompts, or cues in order to get the student to think a little deeper. So in this case, the teacher might say something like this. Look back at the text. How did the author say the astronauts were moving? At that point, the student might recognize that it said that the astronauts were bounding across the moon like ghosts on a trampoline. So if you think about how ghosts on a trampoline might look, they should be able to come up with a synonym for what that word bounding might mean. As you notice that students are starting to strengthen their ability um, with the skill that you're working on, you can give them an opportunity to also work collaboratively in order to build that student interaction, academic discourse, and structured collaboration amongst your students and really give them an opportunity to start taking on the learning. Um, don't expect a quiet classroom during this time. It's not going to be chaotic, but it's going to be structured collaboration. So once you've done some guided practice with students, the next step might be to break students into groups and give them an opportunity to practice the skill collaboratively. You'll see in this example, the teachers using fan and pick to give the students an opportunity to read a sentence uh, with an unknown word and then having to work together to use the context clues in order to tell their peers what they think the word means and why they think so. After students have had a lot of opportunities for guided practice and collaborative learning, you can slowly 
start to turn things over to them to work independently on the skill. This is their opportunity to prove what they've learned. During this time, um, it can happen both in and out of class. So it can be um, classwork, independent work, or it can also be homework. You're gonna give students an opportunity to reflect on the success criteria, thinking about whether or not they were successful with today's lesson and taking on this new skill. In the classroom, you might use, in this uh, example of using context clues, you might use something like the leveled reader in order to give students an opportunity to apply this skill or strategy to a book that's at their readability level. This is really the time for teachers to start to evaluate student learning and offer feedback and support as needed for students as they take on this new skill and work on it independently. Take a look at this note-taking guide. I'll include an attachment in the resources of this document for your reference. You'll notice that although this process is not always linear, students will slowly start to take on more and more of the cognitive load as you take students through the four components of a lesson. I color coded this in order for you to really see the levels of support. So notice that during focus instruction, the teacher is going to be really taking on the most of the cognitive work and then slowly releasing that to students as you go through the cycle of learning. Whereas in the beginning, the students are really listening, taking notes, asking for clarification, and then slowly they will be the ones that are going to take on the heavier uh, cognitive load. So I want you to think about this idea that in every lesson, so not once a week, um, not throughout the whole week, but in every lesson, how could we include opportunities for focus instruction, teacher modeling, guided instruction, opportunities for students to learn alongside you as the teacher, collaborative learning, a chance for students to work with their peers, and independent learning, a chance to show what they know. This is a may be a new concept for you. Um, graduate release has been around a long time, but this idea that it should that all four components should be part of each lesson might be kind of hard to think about. But let's try to see if we can slowly start to incorporate all four of these into each of our many lessons that we provide students throughout the day. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact me. My email address is laura.smart at omsd.net. And I really thank you for your time today.